welcome. And it is Sunday. It is Sunday, the 29th of March, 2020. And um, today I'm walking Percy around, you know, the neighborhood. And what comes to me is how do we decide where we can become spiritually fed? Where do we go? All right. Now, as you know, I've been to all of them, okay? I was a witness. I've been with the Seventh-day Adventists, the Mormons, the Catholics, four varieties of Jewish um, shuls, the Orthodox, Reformed, Conservative, and Reconstructionist. I've been to the um, Church of Christ scientists, the non-denominationals, the 12 tribes, the Episcopalians, and the Presbyterians, and the Methodists. Okay, I've been to town, honey. I've been to town. And how do you get spiritually fed when everybody has a different agenda? How, do, how does this work? How does this work? Well, it all comes down to a core there's a core of true facts, of true information that all of the holy books agree on. Okay, we've got our Bible, okay? And the Bible is the best summary of the covenant of Yahweh, the planetary sovereign's desire to save and salvage human souls who were outside of the covenant of ascension. Now, what's the covenant of ascension? The covenant of ascension is doing the practices of self energetic and emotional development to achieve a set of behaviors that are acceptable to the galaxy. Ascension is a galaxy function and salvation is a planetary function. All right, got that now. Ascension is best articulated in the Buddhist tradition, which is impersonal, and the latest iteration of the, blue, the Buddhist tradition, which is impersonal, is in the Zuan Falong that has been distributed in China and is forbidden there. The people who follow Zuan Falong in China get murdered and their body parts get sold. That's the experience that their souls experience in order to find out that their souls are in fact greater than their physical bodies. All right. It's an uncomfortable experience, but it happens. And it happens to Christians who become the victims of ideologies that teach crimes as holy doctrine. What ideologies, what churches teach crimes as holy doctrine? Okay. In the Hebrew tradition, the Talmud teaches <coughs> child sex trafficking, usury, and supremacy, all right, which contradict the holy law of Yahweh. In the Quran, just to mention a few teachings, they teach takia, which is lying and double dealing, jizya, which is um, protection tax racketeering, and jihad, which is divide and conquer. In the Quran, <coughs> they call it holy teachings, okay? But if you look at nature, if you look at 
the ocean, the meadow, the mountains, the forests, okay? Crime is not the teaching. Predation is one thing where one species preys on another in order to survive. But that's not what ideology does. The Satanist who kills a child and drinks the child's blood and eats the child's flesh does not depend on cannibalism in order to survive. It's a matter of ideology. The rape gangs that prey on women who aren't dressed to look like bags of laundry, okay, are not sanctioned or taught by a holy God to violate young women because they aren't dressed the way that the ideology specifies. All right. We've got to have a difference here between godly behavior and ideology. I keep showing you the holy law that's in the Old Testament, which is just common laws, common sense, laws of causes and effects. If you do certain behaviors, you get a good outcome. If you refrain from doing other bad behaviors, you get a good outcome. If you do something and you made it, make a mistake and you do something bad and you cause harm, you can repent from that and fix the mistake you caused and get back on the path to doing good. Okay. It's all about behavior. What behaviors do you choose? What acts do you act out in order to create a future for yourself? Are your actions self-oriented in the short term or long-term oriented in terms of relationships in your bloodline, in your, um, in your affiliations, okay? Or as Native Americans and indigenous peoples define bloodline as going forward seven generations. This is what we have to think about, okay? Whom are we following in terms of our behavior? Our ideas don't matter. What we think is true doesn't matter because as we proceed from infancy to toddlerhood to childhood to adolescent to adult, we correct our beliefs about what's true all the way along. And by the time you get to be an old fart like me in your 70s, you realize that what you knew as true when you were in your 70s is not what is actually true now. Okay, no, that was too simplistic. That was too fraught with dogma and doctrine and liturgy and belief systems. Okay, see what I'm saying? So we need to look at behavior. We need to look at what are we doing and saying to other people to either build them up or tear them down. It's easy to tear people down. And that's not what we're called to do. All right, so the books that we have available to us are more than just the Bible, all right? Because Sumerian cuneiform tablets validate Genesis, okay? The Urantia book validates the story and characters in the Bible. The Owaspi validates not only the stories and characters in the Bible, but the context in which they occurred, which was setting as opposites 
the teachings of spirituality versus the teachings of religion. Religion and spirituality are different. Religion and metaphysics are different, all right? Cognitive science and scientism driven by political correctness are different, all right? What, this, what the scientists and NASA teach us about the moon, the sun, the stars, and the geological confirmation of the ground we are walking on is not the same, okay? It's not the same as the physical reality. And that's because the money that provides grants for scientists has to hold to a doctrine, a dogma, that is a centralized truth, whether it's true or not. All right. And that's why they keep teaching us that we're the only human race, that we're isolated here in the, in the universe, that we're very small, like the grains of sand, and that there's nobody else, and there's nothing else. Okay, that's why we keep getting these teachings that the abductions and UFOs are mythical, not real, that Bigfoot is mythical, not real, that um, the, um, the earth is either a pizza <laughs> or it's a spinning ball, neither of which is true. All right. We have to learn how to intuit via the pineal gland, which means we can't be drinking the water full of fluoride that ossifies the pineal gland. We have to have clean water and clean food to know when we're being lied to. Do you know when you're being lied to? You're being lied to a lot, <laughs> okay? <laughs> we are all being um, lied to a lot. In the, main, in the mainstream media, they're pitiful, honest to God. They're pitiful. They believe what they're saying. And they're repeating propaganda and liturgy and dogma and doctrine that is imposed on them top down if they want to continue to receive a paycheck. And that's why they're doing it, because they're desperate for their paycheck. We're all desperate for our paychecks, okay? So just relax. We don't need to blame anybody. This is a complex situation. It's a cosmic turnover, a cosmic judgment. And all we want to do is for those of us who are harmless and decent and truth telling, we want to get through it. We want to get our families through it. So let's focus on doing that. All right, now yesterday I talked about physical safety, being physically clean and how that helps your way of thinking, that helps your intelligence, that helps your ability to intuit the difference between what's on the text lines and what's in between the lines. We have to be clean people. We have to believe in honesty. And then, as it all turns out, we'll make it. We'll make it. We'll get there. Because we love life and we love the world and we love God. And we're saying, okay, God, all this madness is just madness. Let's get through it. Thank you. This has been Emily Craig, and it is Sunday, the 29th of March, 2020. And I want to say... God love you all. We'll get through it. Honest. I promise.